Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and multiple alleles. Now before we get into all that, let's make sure we're comfortable with this idea of being dominant or recessive. But basically, if something, if an, if an allele is dominant, it has the ability to mask or like cap off or cover up the other allele from showing up. In biology, a lot of times we like to use flowers. So for example, we can have purple flowers, we can have white flowers, and then also we can have purple flowers. Well, this flower right here is big P, little p. So he's what's called being heterozygote for uh, flower color. But if you take a look, he, he ends up being purple. This flower here is big P, big P, and it's purple. This flower here is little p, little p, and it's white. But this one here is, is one of each, and it's still purple. So we know for sure that that big P right there has the ability to mask that little p so we don't end up seeing any white. However, sometimes we get this weird concept called incomplete dominance, where actually we end up seeing both of those traits at the same time. So it's, it's where we get this third phenotype, where it's sort of a mix of the other two uh, phenotypes. For example, we can have red flowers, right? Big R, big R. We can have white flowers, which are little R, little R. But sometimes they can mix together where we have one of each, and they end up being pink. To find out a little bit more, uh, about this phenomenon called incomplete dominance. Please follow this link right here. It'll take you to a video one of my coworkers made. Great video, and it'll explain a little bit more how we can use Punnett squares to show how inc incomplete dominance works. Another phenomenon we find in biology is this idea of codominance where actually we have both alleles sort of show up at the same time. A really good example of that is sickle cell anemia in humans. Sickle cell is a disease in human blood that actually, if you have it, people with sickle cell won't survive uh, into adulthood. But we have normal blood cells, and we can have sickle cell blood cells. These ones here are the ones that make people really sick. And then sometimes we can actually have what's called codominance, where some of them are sickle cell and some of the cell blood cells are normal. It's, it's as if both of them show up. To find out more about codominance and how we can use Punnett squares to show how codominance works, please follow the link right here. Another thing we find in biology is multiple alleles where, uh, as we've been, been discovering, uh, instead of having just one allele, example, tall or short, or brown eyes or blue eyes, we have many, many alleles that show up in the human population. And actually, ultimately, uh, most of the time, most traits end up doing work this way, where we have uh, many, many, many alleles that account for the same type of trait. One of those examples is blood type in human beings. Uh, we have many different blood types that are found in human beings. You can be type A blood, you can be type B blood, you can be type A blood, and you can be type O blood. And also, you can be type A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, and O positive or O negative. So all those things are traits found in the human in, in the human population, but you don't show all of those at the same time. To find out more information on how multiple alleles works, please follow the link right here. Anyway, guys, that will conclude uh, the introduction to incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and multiple alleles. This is Mr. Herbst. I'm signing off. Have a nice day.